My name is Paul De Leon. Um, I'm 38 years old. I got baptized and received the Lord at 10 years old. I started walking away when um, I got wind that my mom and my dad were getting divorced. And um, they were getting divorced when I was 13 years old. And um, I started hanging out with some of my friends and um, starting to part myself away from my parents. My name is Adila Diaz and I am Paul's mother. Paul got together with his wife real, real young. They got together at 16 years old. Mm -hmm. And then they moved to Lansing and they always lived on their own and it's always worked all the time. I started hanging out with some older people and uh, it led me into um, the drinking part and from the drinking part it led me into the cheating part of not being faithful to the wife and um, not being faithful to the wife led into uh, starting using drugs. I was doing environmental cleanup um, and train derailments, uh, tanker spills and catastrophes when the hurricanes would hit these houses and um, I've been in that business for 13 years. We would hire people from different countries, from like Peru or Ecuador, um, you know, south, down in the South America area to uh, help labor. I really loved my job. I was a person that would work anywhere from um, the minimum of 60 hours to 110 hours a week for those 13 years. I put no time for God in those years. Um, a lot of it had to do with my work, with my drinking, hanging out with my friends. I approached the excavator um, tugging on a piece of metal which was a pipe that was un unidentified and he pulled with force and the pipe come out of the ground flinging at a good rate of speed that hit me in the face and knocked me unconscious. What I can remember a little bit of was trying to stand up and tell the people or the guys, my employees, that everything was okay, return to work and that was for about two seconds, and then I collapsed again. Well, I call him back and I say, what's up? And he says, are you sitting down? And I says, no. He says, well, sit down. He goes, because Paul was in an accident. He just broke his nose and broke his arm. And I sit down and I'm like, oh my God. I got kind of scared, but not really scared because I didn't know. He just said he got hurt. I didn't know how, how bad he was or anything like that. My brother's calling me and says, you know, we need to get to the hospital. Paul's been in an accident. You know, they don't think he's going to make it. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, Alex just told me he broke his nose and that his arm was broke, you know, so what's going on? And he's like, I'm going to go pick you up right now. He goes, get the kids together. We're going to Grand Rapids. I could feel a lot of pain. They were trying to, um, get my nose and my mouth back in place because that was pretty much the worst part that was um, um, out of order and uh, to help me try to breathe on my own. The ride seems forever. It seems forever. We wait there, we get there, we wait there and we're just pacing back and forth on the hospital floor. We get there before Paul, like 20 minutes before he does. And then finally his boss comes in and his nephew comes in and um, they said, have you seen Paul? And he said, no, we haven't seen him. So he goes up to the desk and he says, what's the holdup? You know, how come they haven't seen Paul yet? And uh, the doctor said, he's not here yet. They're still not here. They were going to fly him, but they went ahead and brought him by ambulance. Um, turns out that they had to end up putting tubes up in there and uh... They got my nose reconstructed and my mouth pretty much in place and put me on a ventilation. His boss came and told us, you know, pause here, but um, 
just don't freak out when you see him. And then that's when we were like, okay, they told us it wasn't nothing serious. And so me and Yaya end up going back there and then it just, it didn't look like him. And the only way I knew it was Paul was he has an E on his hand for Esmeralda. And that's how I knew it was him. Whenever they do get there, they call us to the back and we go and see him. And you can't even recognize him. He is black and blue. His, he's got a face mask on and he's got a big old hole where his nose is supposed to be all the way into his mouth. And it was, it was just ugly. It was terrible. When I went in the emergency room, that was not Paul. Paul was so, so uh, bruised up and with oxygen and, you know, we just, I just couldn't, I couldn't see that in my son. I couldn't believe it was my son. They had him on life support and everything. And they had to rush him to a surgery as soon as the plastic surgeon came in. So they were waiting for that. My uh, oral maxillofacial guy, what he did was put plates all around my mouth, reconstructed my nose, all my cheekbones are plates, and my eyeballs, they now sit on uh, plates as well. We got together and we started praying for him, and we all got around him and prayed, and you know, and they just told us, you know, what was wrong with him, and we were in the emergency for almost a whole night. We were trying to sew him up and everything. Mm -hmm. They had to do two blood transfusions and uh, almost, lost, lost, almost lost me twice on the table. Um, he had surgery. They did the surgery all on his nose, fixed his nose back up the way they thought it would be and stuff, which they did make it a lot wider than it was normally. And um, they did that part. That took like three hours. And then they couldn't do the the brain part of the surgery because he had too much swelling and they had to wait 24 hours so they waited 24 hours but you know we couldn't talk to him about nothing because he was in and out of it you know unconscious mm -hmm. but um so then the next day was friday and so friday they put him in intensive care unit so we were there and uh me and his uh, boss was talking to well they're at the hospital and he had told me that he had prayed for Paul the longest time. I said, I have too. And I know, I know, I know that God's going to bring him because I believe and I have faith that God's going to bring him in. The next, whenever his surgery was going to come, the 24 hours were up and they said it was going to take about three hours, four hours for that surgery to be done. It took like, I think it was 12 hours that surgery to get done. They had, he had a cracked skull and he had air bubbles around his brain and stuff. And then whenever he got done with that, he was in um, the intensive care unit for two days. I always knew about God and my mom always talked to us about God and how we should, you know, live God's way and stuff. And that I was like, if my brother lives, I'm gonna, you know, this is what I wanna do. I had gone to go sit out in the lobby with the kids and his friend, Rick Shamil, had came in to see him. That was his boss from the work, from work he was working at, and his mom. And he asked them, could they pray for him? And whenever they came out of there, his mom told me that he had asked them, could they say a prayer for him so that he could be saved? I stood in there with him and he said he was tired. And I said, well, I'm tired of what, son? He says, Mom, God forgives. I said, yes, Mom, God forgives. He says, I want to change my life. I said, you're telling me that you want to you wanna change your life completely to God? He said, yes. So that's when I gave him the salvation plan, and he repeated it. And then we, we prayed. And I asked him, Paul, do you, do you know what you said? Do you know what you did? Yes, Mom. When I was in the hospital, me and my mom, and my operations manager, who is a real good Christian friend, we, uh, I received the Lord right there on my deathbed. Um, the accident happened and then I was out of the hospital 
And um, I was with the Wartmouth Comp for probably about four, maybe five months. Um, probably more five months. Like four or five months, we had like nothing. No money, we, had a, we were thrown out of our apartment. We had to go try to go get an assistance, they wouldn't help us. And we had to move in with his brother. And we were just going through a lot. I lost my house. I lost my vehicles. I lost self-confidence. Um, it was like I was just a uh, deadbeat dead. They could not feed or could not be responsible for his family. They kind of doubt that the uh, kind of work that I did that I would never return back to that line of work again. I lost my sense of taste and I lost my sense of smell. Um, my taste is kind of sort of coming back, but my sense of smell has been totally damaged. Um, I forget where things go sometimes around the house. You know, I know that um, he struggles. There was time when he struggled a whole, whole lot that he didn't have no income coming, but he, but he stood firm with the Word of God. Up to today, I still live with a lot of pain and I still take a lot of medications. I don't think that anybody who does not have the power of the Lord could not um, be able to handle this pain. Um, I came with a couple thoughts of uh, suicidal because of the pain that I could not handle. And with the strength of the Lord and the love of my family, um, the thoughts go in different directions. Mm -hmm. Together we just bring ourselves back up. I always say, God, I'm going to ask you for a little bit more strength. Just let me hang on. We can, we can get this. Mm -hmm. We're not going to let the devil beat us. Mm -hmm. Paul started coming here and he really liked it. He enjoyed it. Um, he said that, you know, you could feel the spirit and with the music and um, so he invited me here and I came and I was like, the message just seemed like it was for me. And I was like, oh my God, that's me. You know, they're speaking to me. This message is mine. And I just started crying and that's when I went and asked for prayer and, um, I got saved. I give thanks to God because God brought my son back. We've, we've gotten really strong with God. We know that he's been there for us because things don't happen just because they happen. They happen because of him. I love this church. Um, it, it's helped me a lot. And um, this place really, really connected me with God.